Hola clase, ¿cómo están? Bien. So, we've done some practice with the imperfect subjunctive. Next week, we're going to be talking about hypothetical situations and if clauses and things like that. So, uh, today I'm going to give you a preview video. Now, we've talked about how the imperfect subjunctive conjugates, right? We've seen things like a lot of the irregular forms that you practice with Kobe Spanish and the Kia quiz. So, for example, the verb dar, which in the preterite is dieron, and that's become diera, and fuera, and quisiera, and sintiera, and trajera, and viniera, and many other irregular verbs, but these are some of the most commonly used ones. We talked about how the imperfect tense in the subjunctive or past subjunctive is used when the main clause expresses wishes like I wanted you guys to woke to wake up early today yo quería que él se despertara temprano I I she was happy that there was a new teacher or there were a new teacher se alegró que hubiera una profesora nueva instead of it is important that you listen well it was important that you listened well era importante que tú escucharas el médico recomendó que hiciera ejercicio for our emotions in personal expressions okay our recommendations our doubt right now dudamos it could be present but in this case it's preterite right it's the same conjugation dudamos que ellos tuvieran una prueba hoy we doubted that they had a test today and obviously the last one from the weirdo which is ojalá now ojalá remember is i hoped or i wished right uh now in this case let's say saturday is crummy weather and i can use ojalá with the present tense conjugation of the subjunctive and i say oh ojalá no llueva este sábado i wish it doesn't rain i hope it doesn't rain this saturday but when you use ojalá for I wished for something in the preterite, that means that that cannot be resolved anymore, right? If I say ojalá que no lloviera hoy, it's kind of like saying I wish it didn't rain today, but it did. So, we're going to get started with if clauses. So, if clauses is when you say if something do something else right that's used in computer programming but we talk about that in everyday life and more often than you think so let's look at these three examples here in english if i study i will pass if i study it i would pass if i had studied i would have passed so you see by the way that you use the verbs you can express different things something means attainable this is hypothetical and this is impossible to resolve now if clauses in spanish are called c clauses and express conditions that like in english depend on something else the first set of if clauses that we're going to be talking about and there are three kind of groups the first one it's real attainable the second one is the one that it is hypothetical and the third one it is impossible so first let's take a look at the attainable so if they are attainable guess what there is not going to be any subjunctive think of the word subjunctive as subjective so if it is attainable it is going to start it with if present tense okay like for example in class um, you don't always see me uh, in the morning except when we have half days but normally I always have my amino energy first thing in the morning I'm not a coffee drinker or a tea drinker but I like that so if I'm thirsty in the morning that's what I drink okay this is a real thing so si tengo sed bebo amino energy so both parts are in the present okay si tengo sed bebo amino energy now let's think about something else attainable today at one o'clock I have a faculty meeting okay I hope that it doesn't drag too long so 
I can say, you know, if I finish earlier before one o'clock, I mean, it starts at one. So if I finish before two o'clock, I will catch my favorite show on TV. Okay. So this means I'm planning to watch this show and I feel it's attainable. So I could say, si termino la cita de los profesores más temprano, I will watch that show. Miraré el programa en la televisión. Or, voy a mirar el programa en la televisión. Okay? Like in this statement, if the boss asks me, I'm not going to lie to her. Or, I will not lie to her. So, you can express the future in a couple of different ways. The third part for real situations is when I'm ready to give a command, okay? So, in class, I could use that many often. For example, you're taking a test and I say, if you finish early, take off your books, okay? If you finish early, work on your Duolingo. So, the first part, if you finish, will be the present. Si terminan el examen temprano. And the second part, I could say my command, right? Abran sus libros, practiquen el Duolingo, or do something else, okay? So, the first set of if clauses that you're seeing here goes by if present, either present, either future, or a command. If I'm hungry, I eat the Snickers from my pantry. That's the first one, present. If I have time this afternoon, I will ride my bicycle. That will be the ex next example, right, for future. Si tengo tiempo libre esta tarde, montaré en bicicleta. Or I could express the same thing by instead of using will or I'm going to, no? Si tengo tiempo libre esta mañana, esta tarde, Voy a montar en bicicleta, okay? Or, uh, my wife could ask me that question. If you have free time this afternoon, ride the bikes with the kids. Si tienes tiempo libre esta tarde, monte en bicicleta con los niños. You understand? We feel like this is attainable. So, let's talk about that second group. That's the one with the cartoon in the middle, with the girl saying, if I, if I studied, I would have gotten a good grade. You know, I would get, I, I would have gotten, I'm sorry, I will get a good grade. So, let's talk about that. That kind of situation, it's called hypothetical, right? And we use that so often because we like to put ourselves in each other's shoes. We could say, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't do that, okay? If I were Mr. Teixeira, I would not give any homework, okay? We do that so often, and probably that's the one we use the most, and that's the one that we're actually going to use the imperfect, because we even do that in English without even realizing. Because everybody knows, at least I hope you know, that you can't say, if I was you, I would do this. The correct way we say, if I were you. That's why we learn this grammar. Because, you know, in English, people have their own issues with grammar, right? People say, like, if I was, instead of if I were. So, we got to use past subjunctive for that first part, okay? Uh, so, let's look at the first example. Si ustedes no fueran tan incapaces, ya lo tendrían listo. That's a horrible example, by the way, from the book. If you weren't also incapable, you'd already have this already. Oh, uh, that's not good. Okay, let me think of some other ones for you, okay? So, this is a chart that I'm going to share later on with you. Okay, so don't worry about it right now. But... Let's talk about this. All right, so uh, I'm going to get out of presentation mode here. And uh, 
and uh, let's see here so if it were summer so how would you express if it were summer well you have to use imperfect subjunctive right si fuera verano if if i could eat anything if i could we eat so see oh i forgot to change this to see see i'm not going to worry about accent marks here guys okay if i could eat anything imperfect subjunctive si pudiera comer cualquier cosa if my parents were millionaires si mis padres fueran millonarios if i won the lottery lottery si ganara la lotería if we didn't have COVID-19 in the U.S., si no tuviéramos, with an accent, COVID-19 en los Estados Unidos, something wouldn't happen, right? So, for example, si fuera verano, I would go to the pool. So, conditional, iría a la piscina. <coughs> uh oh, can't even talk about. <coughs> Coronavirus and I start coughing. Horrible. I would eat at a uh, rodizio. So, imperfect. Comería, comería en un rodizio. Those are those Brazilian restaurants, all you can eat meat. If my parents were millionaires, uh, we would live in a mansion. Viviríamos en una mansión. And uh, if I won the lottery, I would build a house with my own sky zone. Construiría, construiría una casa con mi propio sky zone. And if we didn't have COVID-19 in the United States, we would be in school right now. Estaríamos en clase ahora, right? So when you put the two together, what do we have? We have an if clause that is hypothetical. And that would be ejemplos combinados. So now we combine the two. So this is an example of if clause that involves imperfect, subjunctive, and conditional. So it would be something like si fuera verano, iría a la piscina. Si pudiera comer cualquier cosa, comería en un rodizio. Si mis padres fueran millonarios, construiría, uh, viviría en una mansión. Si ganara la lotería, construiría una casa con mi propio sky zone. Si no tuviéramos COVID-19 en los Estados Unidos, estaríamos en clase ahora. So that is an example of if clause hypothetical. Now, now this works just like an equation. In other words, you can flip-flop and I could say both in English and Spanish that I would go to the pool if it were summer. Iría a la piscina si fuera verano. I could say... I would eat at a rodizio if I could eat anything right now. Comería en un rodizio si pudiera cual comer cualquier cosa ahora. And so forth. So, please watch, uh, make sure you uh, pay attention to the video. And uh, and if you have any questions, please contact me. Uh, this is uh, uh, something very important because uh, if clauses uh, is something that we use every day in both English and Spanish. Adiós.